Okay? Anyone else? Okay. Oh, well, now we'll ask our commissioners if they would have any comments they'd like to make. Uh, Commissioner Pearson? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. I, I thought I asked, was there anyone else? <laughs> yeah, please do. Good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon. Good evening. First and foremost, I want to apologize. I want to apologize for my actions that occurred Monday. I'm sorry. But as long as I have breath in my body, I'm going to fight for righteousness. I'm not going to stand by and just let outside sources come in and try to disrupt what we have going on in the city. Douglas is a great place. It's a great place to live. We have friends. I look at everybody as my neighbor. And the Bible tells me to love my neighbor. So I'm going to love you. I'm going to fight for you. And another thing I want to say, people seem to think that the Douglas Police Department is not operating right. But they're doing the best that they can do. They treated me professionally. They did their job. Nobody came to me and offered me any kind of favor. I'm proud of what our chief customers are doing with our Douglas Police Department. And I'm encouraging every citizen upon the sound of my voice, if you see something, say something. Even if it's me. If you see something, say something. Let's stop this division in our community. Let's work together. Douglas is a great place. It's a great place. And we move forward. We are, we're working together. And that's what we stand for. I've been in this city now for 19 years of blood, and I have seen a lot of progress. I have seen a lot, especially in City Hall. And a lot of y'all can remember, I used to come up here and raise all kind of scene, but I see the change. I see smiles on people's faces. And that's what we need. That's what we got to continue doing. It's working together. Stop trying to bring one department down, a district department down, and lift them up. If you can't say that something good, keep your mouth shut. Don't say nothing at all. So once again, I humbly apologize for my action. I really do. But I will not stand for any corruption to my neighbors. And you all are my neighbors. I love each and every one of them. I really do. And if it takes me spending in jail, so be it. I don't mind. I will fight for that story. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Let me say that I commend you for standing up for what was right. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, any audience? Okay. Now uh, we'll uh, ask our commissioners if they have comments. Uh, Commissioner Pearson, would you like to begin, please? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, the other thing that I'm going to say is that, um, you know, I'm not going to get into detail about uh, the incidents last week and uh, whatever. What I will say uh, to the public is that those people who know me, know me and know what I stand for. And I'd just like to ask that you use common sense when you read our newspapers, when you watch the news, People who are writing stories, they write the stories the way they want to write it. A lot of times it's regardless of what the truth may be. And I can definitely say that in my case, uh, it was a lie which was written and I really don't appreciate it. Uh, and it's really sad. I've commented before about how our newspaper seems to be uh, a, a divisive mechanism. And it seems to be getting worse. But I'd just like to say, if you don't know something, ask. Don't assume that what you're reading is the truth. And, and I'm going to start with that because it's really kind of upsetting how people can take the truth and turn it all the way around to try to make it seem or be how they want it to be. But I tell you, I, I'll say this and I'll end with this. You all who are writing the papers, who are, who are telling the news, you all have a God to answer to. So if you can live with yourself, then peace be with you. That's all I have, Mayor. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Mr. Joseph? Mr. Swain? Yeah, I'd just like to commend uh, Willis and Stevie for the work that you guys are doing with the Red Department. You guys are doing a good job. Thank you for the teamwork that you're doing, making our, making our Red Department a successful work. Department. Appreciate the work that you both of you guys do. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Moore? 
I just want to compliment Mr. Neesmith on the stand he took, and uh, if you can't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Mayor Pro Tem? Uh, same with our community. Right, since I not on condone fighting, but I commend you for the stand that you took in a way at the same time. Uh, I'd like to thank all the citizens to the, whatever you read and whatever you see, evaluate it and evaluate it as for what it is. The newspaper has a right to write freedom of speech, just like each one of us have freedom of speech. And it's up to us to decide what we what we decide, but there's nothing found on what anybody writes, but it is found when we have the answer to it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, May I have a question? Yes, ma'am. And, and I have this question because my name was mentioned in the newspaper, and we've had two commissioners to state about uh, commending a stand that was taken. So since those commissioners want to commend somebody for a stand that was taken, the question I have is what is the stand that you're commending somebody for? What was the stand that was taken? Explain that to me. Explain uh, that to me. You said you commend somebody for a stand they took. So what, what's the that's thing? Be up to the commissioner if you want right, to address right. that or if you don't, that's up to you. You want to come out and comment on it? You're saying something you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, well, let's, let's don't get in. They, everybody has a right to express their opinion. Right, but that's what I'm saying to the people now. Yes, ma'am. Know what you're talking about. Know what you're talking about. And it makes no sense and it's wrong for people to print stuff that's a lie and other folks to say they commend it. Well, I mean, yes, ma'am, but they... Said anything about what the paper said? Nobody said anything. They're just expressing their opinion. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. They indicated that they were supporting okay. that when they yes, said what they said. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the City of Douglas Man Commission meeting. This will serve as our regular meeting <coughs> this April 23rd. 2018. Next on the agenda, we have recognition and presentation of award. Uh, Commissioner Pearson, if you would please. All right. Good evening. Good evening. 
Welcome to the City of Douglas Mayor and Commission meeting. This is a special call meeting. Next on the agenda is the order of the approval of the agenda. I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. It's been motioned and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Next on the agenda, we have uh, a new format here. Uh, item five, uh, the agenda items that we'll be discussing, uh, item 5A and 5B. We are here to discuss these two items. Uh, after our last meeting, we found out that some of the things that were verbalized were not necessarily in accordance with uh, the state law and our charter. So we are here uh, after much discussion. Uh, a few of the commissioners wanted to have a discussion about these events again. So at this time, <coughs> item A, uh, to discuss the uh, elected travel policy, the first thing we need to do is I need a motion to rescind our previous uh, vote on not imposing a travel policy. So I move. It's been motion. Second. It's been motion second. Any further discussion? Mayor Pro Tem. I thought that was for the ones that was in agreement, so the Roberts Rules of Order, and the ones that that was in the totality of it, of the four, that they got only rescind the vote. So there. Well, we're just making a motion. Okay, we can make, okay. That's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Hopefully you've had enough time to take a look at the uh, elected travel policy that is presented before you. Uh, it's about eight pages long, and it sort of hits on a number of items that we're to be governed by. Also, our city managers also attached a roadmap to travel policies for municipal officials that has been orchestrated or crafted by uh, the Georgia Municipal Association. So, Mr. Adams? Yes, Mr. Davis, I appreciate you getting that together for us, too. That's been very helpful. Mr. Adams, I would like for you to weigh in this uh, from a legal point of view. Well, Mayor, as you know, the city of Douglas has never really had <coughs> a written travel policy for its elected officials. I've never been called upon to give a legal opinion as to what the law provides as to that. It's never really been that much of an issue. However, in recent week or two, uh, I have been asked to look at this and in looking at OCGA 36354, there is an express prohibition against uh, any funds being used for anyone other than the elected official. It's statutorily set out in that code section. That code section is attached to your information. Uh, and, you know, the issue that came up last week or the week before where the commission was in favor of providing uh, expenses for meals and things like that for elected officials, you approved. However, that would be violative of this code section. Okay. Have you reviewed the uh, current policy before us, and is that in compliance? I have reviewed the current policy as proposed by the city manager, and that policy follows uh, the outline that was prepared by the GMA legal staff that is attached to your information. Thank you very much. And I, I would also point out, Mayor, <clears throat> that in looking at the travel expenses for the city of Douglas, uh, since Douglas did not have a written policy, I looked at the federal policies as well as the state policies and neither one of those provide for expenditures on behalf of anyone other than the elected official or the staff member. Thank you. Uh, as I said previously, uh, after much discussion and media exposure and barbershop talk and church talk and stuff like that, wanted to make sure that we were in compliance with the state law and our charter. So at this time, I will entertain a motion 
to approve the policy as written that is before us. <coughs> The policy that's attached, the travel policy. Move to approve. Second. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Um, cool. Now I'm I'm kind of mixed up because on the ones to move forward, it has to be in the four that in order to bring it back. The ones in the four. Not to make, not to make <coughs> the motion. Okay. Anybody can make the motion. Okay. So it's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. The next item is to discuss decision to combine two community development uh, department positions. Again, uh, at the research and understanding that our charter, I've actually talked to uh, the state about this as far as us being in compliance with our charter. Uh, what we did last time was not in compliance with the charter. So at this time, we are here to render hopefully a decision that will bring us in compliance with our charter. So at this time, I will entertain a motion to rescind the decision to combine those two positions as stated in the previous meeting. So we, it's been motion and second. Any further discussion? Yes. Mayor Pro Temp, the floor recognizes you. Um. I was told that if Robert Rules of Order, in order to resend something, it has to be any of the ones that's, that voted the last time from the last meeting. Correct. The last meeting was for the, um, the last meeting. My thing is that if we merge the jobs, like I said before, I'm not changing my vote on that because I stand firm on what I say. By merging the, do by, by merging the jobs do, do with the um, city planner, he has the qualifications, the employees have the qualification, education, and the knowledge of to administrate grants. As the city planner, his responsibilities is to manage different studies pertaining to community development and prepare different reports that he will come across reference with some of the grants, some of the grants that the city will receive. Grants and planning for, for the community needs to go hand in hand, I think, with planning of housing and community development projects. I have a question for Charlie. Do you think that merging the jobs will break down the learning progression for this department? Our city manager. As stated in earlier meetings and also in the agenda item, the issue is not about a particular person here. It's about the number of people that we've lost in the recent years in the community development department. We're at a critical stage. We've got a minimum number of employees that we need in that department. And with the three or four retirees that we've had over the years, we just have a lack of uh, the number of personnel, and we need to replace those personnel and then increase the knowledge of all those personnel in that department. Because collectively, we've lost around 130 years of experience, and now with the two people that we have in that department, we have about eight months of experience now. Okay, so now it's 130. Because it seems to me as if the director have decided that the grants administrator will be a crucial role in rebuilding the department. So with that being said, it is required experience and education for a grant administrator. Because if what I've seen on the uh, grants administration duties, it doesn't have high level of education for the performance duties. Since this job is very crucial and the department will be lacking 170 years, that was on the thing on the agenda item for the last meeting of knowledge, then why is it only requiring two years of experience and an associate's degree. That was posted on the last agenda item. 
With that being said, we have a city planner that has a master's degree and that is more qualified. And under that description that y'all gave out, it had about implementing and administrating grants. But they also said that it was taken out because it was for a senior planner. But the reason why we don't have a senior planner for the city of Douglas is because we do not have a planning department. So therefore, Mr. Jacobs, our past city manager, wanted to get a senior, I mean, wanted to get a city planner. Um, something else I want to address while I'm on the floor, Commissioner Pearson sent me a letter of consent, condress, I mean, co co um, addressing this issue. It says, um, Dear Mayor and Commission, I'm sorry I could not be in attendance to, our, to, our, to the call meeting tonight due to other duties and schedules. However, I wish I could have been present for these, for those important meetings, for these important meetings, which I was not consulted about. I want to make it clear that I am not in favor of all, of having all, having all another vote to reverse the decision of the city planner. Having added duties of the grants administrator with a small increase in salary. Her reasoning is for the main reasons the same, by combining the duties will save the city of Douglas approximately twenty to thirty thousand dollars. Especially the concerning fact that the citizens and few commissioners and staff are complaining about the city commissioners adopting a city per diem of city dollars per day, I mean $60 per day, for elected officials travel out of town and city's business. Lastly, I have stated to reverse the decision, which has already been fairly voted upon for this employee. It is a grave injustice not to mention the creation of a hostile environment. I pray that each of you will, tr will truly seek God in your voting this evening. Thanks, Commissioner Pearson. And with that being said, I want to address this about this issue. Going back to the agenda on item on that item that was on there about the city, about the um, grants administrator on 827, 827-28. I just want to say this, that I want to address this, make this for the record, for the citizens, because I'm, I'm, I am aware that the commission is not interested in, in policies, but protocol the following protocol. Going back to the agenda item on 827, the information that was, up, that was presented to uphold the protocol was an accurate and, and is a violation of policy number 19. Rule of personal conduct. The director and the city manager falsified the, uh, the, the, the agenda item by by consenting saying statements on, on a work order recorded that was not said by me nor Commissioner Pearson. How can we insist on following protocol, but we cannot follow written policies? Mr. Tommy, if I may ask you, when I'm in your office, how many people are in your office, if I may ask you? Mm-hmm. Okay, when I come and sit in your office, I have a special chair. Where do I sit in your chair? Where do I sit in? Um, chair. And where is that? Between? Uh, between and who's between the filing cabinets? Uh, and, uh, the two and that's you and? Okay. With that being said, I want to just kill these rumors and the accolations and the accolades. I just want to address this because it's rumors going around of consinuating personal and accusations between an employee and me. But I want to clear the rumors up because when I go into, and Commissioner Pearson have 
a copy of this email that Mr. Charlie, our city manager, sent her stating that I was in their office too much. When I was in their office, Tommy can contest to this, I was in his office helping a citizen named Miss Maddie Moore. Miss Maddie Moore lives on Gaskin Avenue and her house is thought fell apart. I stayed in Tommy's office for how long? Praise about basically about two, about two weeks to three weeks. And we was communicating with Dewey Hayes so that we could get the right stuff so she could get along on that. But the thing about it is, I'm tired of being touched by an elected official stating these accolades and stating these accusations of, of these rumors. I'm tired because I'm all about helping one another. I don't just stand up for one person, I stand up for all persons. And how can you go on with rumors and they're not true? That's creating a hostile environment and also that's creating harassment. I want this to end today. And I speak this, I want this to end today because it's coming against my personal character. It's coming against my personal character and I want this to end today. But if it does continue, I will, I mean I will seek further action. And that's all I have to say on the, let me make sure I didn't leave nothing. But I want to get our citizens involved, not just to be worried about a utility bill, but come and see how the city is spending money on salaries, different other projects, and different things. Because it's more than a utility bill. It's about the city of Douglas that you care about. And I feel that this, this employee is more capable of doing this job. Because we always say we want this to play, be, be a place where our young people come back and come back to work. But the thing about it is that we're gonna give it to a job to a person with two years of experience and an associate's degree. And we have someone that has a master's degree and that was a part of his job description and you took it a part of that. I find that to be wrong and unjust. So that's all I have to say about that. Thank you all. Outstanding. Anybody else have any discussion? Nobody else have any discussion? <coughs> I had said. I, just, I do have one question for the Hold city on. manager. Chair, excuse me. I'm sorry. Chair recognizes Mr. Moore. Uh, on this person for this position, <coughs> as you know, we uh, belong to the Regional Development Commission, mm -hmm. and they are a big help on uh, getting grants for cities, small cities, cities our size, large cities, but it's a big help, and we pay to be a member of that, and so they are uh, at our disposal helping us to receive grants and let us know when we get grants. And, uh, but I think that uh, advertising this person that we talk about, this third person back there, I think we need to advertise it and put the qualifications down there and uh, seek somebody for it. Thank you. Commissioner Gow, <coughs> I just wanted to make, make sure we were still on the same page here. Is it the recommendation of the city manager and the department head that not, not to combine? Not to combine yes, the positions? You feel like it's in the best interest of, of the department and the duties that need to be performed that we need to have two people in that department? Yes, sir. Any other discussion? I have a discussion. Since from the start, since Commissioner Moore, he can attest to this, when it was mentioned about this department, I feel like if we're losing 130 um, years of knowledge, why didn't we bring in somebody with the knowledge in community development? Why didn't we bring <coughs> someone advertise that for that position? But we didn't. We considered and we promoted someone to that position. So I feel like it would be unrightfully, like a lot of stuff is unrightfully, 
And we say that we are going to look at this and look at that. But a lot of positions we put a lot of people in, they don't have the education, but we still put them there. And so I feel as if at the end of the day, that's just like, for instance, we was here the other week about the police, um, the police description and Mr. Um, Mr. Preston, he put on there saying that we wanted to micromanage the police department. But the proposal was, written, was given to us on May the 31st by Mayor Polk for myself, the city manager, the, the new city manager at that time, we was going, you know, going through transitions. The new city manager, myself, Commissioner Pearson, and Commissioner Godwin, to restructure the city, I mean, City Douglas Police Department. But it wasn't as if that was on Douglas now. It's as if the mayor and commission wanted to micromanage. But it was a proposal that was proposed to us. And I told the city manager to reach out to Mr. Preston to tell the truth about the matter because the proposal was given to us and the attacks was on us. So my thing is, if we go out and advertise, why didn't we advertise for the, um, for the community the development director to bring somebody that was over? We had Ms. Dale Batten, she was here. She didn't have an assistant, she didn't have an um, administrative assistant, she didn't have a grants writer, she didn't have none of that, she did the job. Sometimes we have employees that have five other job duties. We have five other job duties, so that's how I feel about that. But we touch what we want to touch, but we don't touch what we feel like we don't want to touch. But if we go by policy, I mean it's the same as. So I just feel like, why care that out and advertise that when we didn't advertise that for that that could run our community development department. So we wouldn't be here today where we at now, losing 130 and 170 years of experience. That's all. That's it. We've already had a motion and a second, and we've had discussion. I had said I wasn't going to say anything. <clears throat> However, I am compelled. Uh, this is not, per se, about an individual. This is about the rebuilding of the community development department. Uh, sometimes in the city, it's not about necessarily saving money. We can save money by... Uh, Mm -hmm. combining all the police officers and you're only having seven. But is that feasible? Is that plausible? That's the question that is before us. The question before us is that, one, in our charter, that is up to the discretion of the city manager. So my thing is this right here. I feel as though that we're not in compliance with the charter. Uh, the young man that we're talking about uh, has done a, a good job down there, but this is about rebuilding that department. That's what this is about. This is about us being in compliance with our charter. Um, could I make Excuse me, I did not interrupt you. Well, I'd like to come okay. you. I did not interrupt you. Okay. So, and what I try to express to citizens Sometimes we want to do a feel good. We want to do a feel good. Well, you know what? There are a lot of mayors of major cities that are in prison for trying to do things outside the scope of their authority. If we want to change the scope of that authority, we need to change the charter. That's what has to happen, is to change the charter. Since our charter is not changed, we need to stay in compliance with our chart. And that's why we're here. That is why we're here, to stay in compliance with our chart. The chair recognizes the mayor pro tem. Okay, since we're following in the um, order of the, ch of the charter, could I please see that in documentation where we're not following in with the um, charter? Because I haven't seen that. I haven't seen where it's lined up to say where we're not. I haven't seen a paper before me to say what policy what charter number it is or nothing like that. But could we get that, please, so that we can see that before us? The charter? Yes, sir. Got a copy of it. Check it. It's online on the website. I know it's not. Right. You have yeah. to ask the city clerk. 
No, it's on the line. I went on there. Yeah, citydouglas.com, right le left-hand right. side, code of ordinances is your charter. I'm saying if we're discussing the charter, that should be laid upon us. But we're going, if we're falling out the lines of the charter. Since we're here tonight, the charter, this week the charter just came up. So therefore, it wasn't mailed nor mentioned to the commissioners that we was not in line of the charter till we got to this meeting or a prior conversation to it. So my thing is, could we get a copy of the charter? I mean, you have to go online to look at it, right? Yeah, you can As print it out. As a commissioner, I have to go online to get the copy? Yes. Can the city clerk, can you get me a copy of the charter, if you don't mind? Thank you so much. We're good. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? And what we're, I will entertain a motion not to combine the positions in the community development department. So move. It's been motion. May second. I have in second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Opposed. What was your vote? Aye. But Robert's rules of order you said to me about stating this Excuse week. Excuse me. Excuse me. Robert rules of order this week, you said that in order the ones that voted it was four to three correct the ones that was in the majority of the vote can flip their vote but the ones that already vote doesn't count there's a new issue before us mayor pro temp what's the new issue about what, what, the same what, thing what, that we what, what i just stated about the same thing that we Com brought commissioner back? moore mm -hmm. commissioner moore is was in the majority Okay. And he has changed his vote. Okay. Okay? Okay. The motion carries. So, the next thing is, on the agenda we have the mayor and commissioner's comments. Uh, mayor Pro Temp, I will start with you. Please, well, please be mindful of the time. And as I'm mindful of the time, but I just, I just, I really don't think that this call meeting should have happened tonight because we will be right back here Monday, which is just a few days from now. And I just don't like how it was not a consensus, a consensus of the whole council. All we were told that the mayor said that we was having a call meeting. Correct. So therefore it wasn't a consensus that went out to check our schedules or nothing. It was just a meeting set in stone. Correct. And I think that that was very unfair to the other commissioner that could not be here because it wasn't aware. It was just a text and an email stating that we was going to do this. But, you know, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. But at the end of the day, I just feel like it's going to come a time when we're going to, when something else is going to come and the shoe is going to be on the other foot. Correct. And we'll really see the issue and everything, but that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor Pro Temp. Thank you so much, Mayor. Commissioner Gowan, Commissioner well, Gowan. I appreciate you having this meeting. I'm glad that we're able to get these two issues resolved. I want to thank all our citizens that have contacted me and have voiced their opinions about, particularly about the, uh, the pay policy. Um, it needed to be fixed, and I'm glad that we're able to do that. Um, I thank all those who have, who have contacted me personally about this issue, uh, and I appreciate the patience of our employees here and for their support on these issues as well. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Taylor? Um, thank you, Mayor. Again, just um, talking with the citizen of Douglas, um, me, myself, you know, I was um, approached about, you know, our travel policy, and um, so, I had told them that we did have a meeting tonight, and I'm glad that we came up with a policy so that um, we all know whenever we go on these training what we need to do, how we need to spend, and all. So um, I'm glad we came up with the policy that we got now so we all could be on the same page. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner McNeil, please. Thank you very much. Um, I agree with um, Commissioner Gowan and, um, and Commissioner Taylor. 
and that I appreciate the citizens response and the folks who've reached out to me personally and um, we you know we're given a task to do the right thing with regard to citizens um, there you know the financial part of the city of Douglas is a great responsibility to save money in any and every way we can but I also agree on the other hand uh, with our city manager that you know to to diminish the job force or to take away responsibilities and take away people who are in important positions and combine jobs at you know at at the can do things to morale it can do things to other people in the city uh, as far as the their capabilities and the way they you know do their job I, I want to see I want to see us carry on and be a, a, a city of ethics and a city of you know having responsible staff and people who look forward to coming to work here I want to see us be I want to see us get along as commissioners also I don't like a divide at all and um, so I would strive towards that and uh, again mayor thank you for bringing this back to allow us to you know revisit this these two issues thank you thank you commissioner McNeil commissioner Moore <coughs> mayor thank you for uh, like I say calling this meeting in this uh, get some things handled and let people know we are interested in what they say and uh, what goes on and uh, we just wanted to get it corrected on the especially on the travel policy and because uh, we're spending taxpayers money and that's some of our money and so thank you mr. Moore uh, my comments are as follows first of all uh, I want to thank my mighty Trojans uh, for winning and holding on to the uh, border war trophy uh, our young guys went out there and fought a, uh, a good game. Uh, we came out victorious. Uh, actually, when I saw that Miss Boulder was going to do uh, the invocation, I was actually going to do the invocation. Uh, I've been chased uh, for the last few days by this bitter cup. If it is not my will, not my will, but if it's your will, let it pass. Tonight was, was challenging. It was difficult. And that's good. That's good. One of the things about operating and governing a city, we have to govern within the laws of the state and the laws that govern our city. It is not okay to just govern. It is important that we govern within those laws. If we do not like those laws, then we shall petition the Georgia General Assembly to change those laws. As I have said, I have been in contact with state legislators about this issue, wanting us to come into compliance. That's what the objective was tonight, was to come into compliance, to govern according to the state laws and our charter. It is paramount that we do what is right. I'm often reminded about Lady Justice. Lady Justice is blindfolded because what is justice to one person may be an injustice to another person. So we must always be mindful of that. One of the reasons that when we started down this journey as a commission, I made a promise that I would never let you walk into this chamber and be blindfolded or blindsided. I always wanted a harmonious atmosphere. We were very jovial, always had a good time. This is one of those trying times to see 
if the relationship that we had for two and a half years gets eroded or erased by one or two events. And in totality, I see a couple pastors sitting over to my left. Sometimes we find ourselves in difficult positions. Sometimes we find ourselves in unpopular positions. President Abraham Lincoln said that the office of the presidency has driven me to my knees more during this presidency than ever in my life. That reigns true with me being the mayor the second time. And I, I say to the citizens of Douglas, this too shall pass. The city of Douglas, we have to get on the other side of this. We have to mend some fences. We have to mend some fences. We are still charged to govern the city of Douglas. That's what we are, are here to do, is to govern the city of Douglas. And leadership by example is the strongest form of leadership. The strongest form of leadership. And we have to set that example. We are held to the highest standard in the city of Douglas. We are held to the highest standard. We don't get to do something incorrect. Every citizen is watching us. And we have to be mindful of that. And I hope and pray that as a council, we will be able to get past this. And I ask this right here. May God continue to bless the citizens of Douglas and I ask God to give me my council bike. The council that I prayed for to come down here and govern in a harmonious environment. I want that council bike. I do not want to drink from this bitter cup of hatred and division anymore. I don't want to do that. I want my council back where we were governing and we were respected in this community. I want that back, and I am here and I am saying this now. I am going to do everything that I can to get that harmonious environment back. At this time, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. It's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We stand adjourned. Mr. Allen is going to the uh, podium. Uh, we're going to make sure that we stay within our three minute time frame. So, Mr. Allen, if you would, at the conclusion of your three minutes, uh, we're going to proceed with the meeting. Thank you. Okay, I want to reject this other video situation where they say that what the new face put in the paper on the last paper they wrote. They said that that Owen had been suspended. When I found out the Orton hadn't been suspended, that's a lie. It got suspended when I had a lawyer to sue the city. Then they brought that in. Because I put my lawyer in my truck in Katie Mobile. He told me to get on the gym. We got the green drink like we done the rest of them. So that policy was not suspended, that's a lie. Number two, Tony Paul, don't you listen real good, you hear me? Now I got this out, y'all, open record question. Sunshine Law, don't you listen real good, you hear me? This is good now. All right. This three minutes, it never was no three minute in the work session. You understand that, y'all? I'm, I'm, this is the law right here. They, uh, they own five now. Well, it was never no three minute in the work session. It was three minutes with all this anticipation for three minutes. 
And the word says, if you get to speak low, you want to speak. And this come out y'all file. Open record, sunshine, loud, Mr. Paul. I want you to listen to it. You got it. Okay. You don't run this city by yourself, brother. I mean what I say. Now, this is what it says now. It says that according to a talk, y'all talk. You got that, Mr. Paul? The city of Dublin government by Robert Rule of Order, New Revised Section 28, Parliamentary Procedure, Section 2-29, states that the mayor shall be silent. You got that? Not make decisions for what I'm the minute of him. Y'all got nothing y'all ought to say that said that a person got three minutes in a work session. That's a fight now. This come out y'all on file, Mr. Paul. So you were wrong last week telling I only got three minutes in a work session. Know your law, know your rules out here. You the mayor. All right, let me finish reading. Now you got that? Now it says this right here. That the mayor shall preside at all commission meetings. That's what it says, preside. Okay, it says preserve order and decorum. It says nothing about no three minutes in no work session. Y'all got that? This come out y'all file. I request this. Ain't no order that said nothing about no three minutes in no work session. You got that? So you're wrong. Now all y'all up here submission need to know what's going on up here. Amen. You got that? It's wrong. So you said you were wrong last week. You come on here in three minutes. Know your rules. Know your regulation. You got that? That's all I got to say now. And Miss Anna, you'll share that with Miss Henderson so she can yeah, copy. Yeah, I said anything I want to share it with. You get copies for me. Oh, Roger. 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 You get copies for me. He won't copy for me. I'll come, I'll get some copy tomorrow. Don't worry about that. Yeah. He's going to go right to the copy room, Mr. F. He's bringing it right back to you. And, and, and he got nothing to work. So he said, nothing about no three minutes. No order, no nothing. Am I right, Mr. Uh, Jerome? I told everything they had. I had Romero to write it down and put it for me. Mr. Allen. No, I'm telling you that. Thank you. I ain't going to be like that. Fight the fight. Next on the agenda. Uh -huh. I have something, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Oh. Um, First of all, again, I'm going to ask the question, Mr. Davis. Uh, is there a an executive session scheduled for tonight? Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Davis, approximately how long have I been asking for an executive session? About three months, I believe. Three okay. Months. So, do you mind answering me? What reason you have not scheduled an executive session when I have constantly been asking about one? We have nothing on hand to go into an executive session. What other what other issues to discuss executive in executive session? Land acquisition, pending uh, legal lawsuits, um, um, we have a personnel issue that needs mayor commission uh, uh, conversation on. Yes or no? Have, have when when. When I was told by the mayor that the council needed heads up on what reasons we need to have an executive session, did I not mention personnel? Right, I mean, if you have a pending litigation or personal action that needs y'all's um, discussion on, we would have a, we would have a, um, Is that meeting. what it states specifically, sir? Yes, it needs, it needs a, a pending? Litigation that needs our right. action on. If we get served with a lawsuit or something, we have to go into so, the So, do we not discuss? Sorry to cut you off. But do we not discuss issues about employment in executive session? If, if there's, a, there's a need to discuss a personnel issue, yes, ma'am. Okay. So, what would grant a need to discuss a personnel issue in executive session? I mean, session? most time they're attached to a legal situation. Because uh, I mean, the regular departmental issues, regular day to day operations, those things are not really issues that would really be before the mayor council. So, you're saying the only time we've been in an executive session regarding personnel was when it was attached to a legal issue? I mean, if, if, if we wanted, if I, if I didn't bring something to y'all, I, I could bring something. What about if we want to discuss I something? mean, if y'all have four votes to go into an executive session, y'all could if, go in. So if I have expressed to you that we need to discuss something with personnel, you mean, you're telling me that you are not going to and you have not placed it on the agenda item for an executive session. It, I mean, at this moment, I have nothing to discuss. I mean, everything. But I've had concerns, Mr. Davis, I mean, for about three months, you just said. Yes, ma'am. So you mean to tell me, for working for this mayor commission, 
with me having concerns, you don't respect me enough to get it into executive session to answer any concerns I have. I mean, if y'all want, if, you, if you're asking for executive session and, and y'all feel the need to go into one. You can put I mean, it on the, the agenda, Mr. Davis, right. without us. Right. You can but do it that. It has to be a pending. I mean, I can't just go in and say I want to just discuss. Okay. All right. So let's do this. I have asked, as you just stated, for about three months about an executive session. And I've mentioned that there are personnel concerns that I had questions about or concerns about. So we have not went into executive session. So since we have not went into executive session, again, when I mentioned before it was a personnel issue that I wanted to discuss, I had to bring it out on the floor. I'm gonna do that again, okay? So I would like to know, what is the current status of the appeals process regarding Britt Lever, a former a former city employee. I mean, all, all the events around that, all that's being placed in your box, you have all the information from from A to Z. Uh, and, and it's been placed in, in, in these envelopes? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so when did they get in the box? Friday. Okay, so I was in the hospital. You said you didn't have her. I called and left message. Oh, for her, for, yeah, for you to give me the results, and you told me that there were no results of it. No, I didn't tell it wasn't the results. Yes, I asked for something written. Written. I asked for something written. You said, but it's okay because see, you're an employee too. You're an employee, and when your day comes that you're not treated fair, you're gonna want to be. You're gonna want some help. You're gonna want some help. Okay. Because Stevie Young. It's Brett well, Leverett, a media supervisor. He did not fire Brett. He didn't fire him. The policy says you have to be fired by your media supervisor. Okay. Well, Stephen didn't even know anything about it. Okay. Yes. You say okay, because you know what I'm telling you. Yes, sir. I have a question. Yes, sir. I heard you did a, you just did a lot of talking, but I didn't hear you reference GMA and assistance from GMA. Don't 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 you think that somebody needs to have some of the 
uh, some questions I can, I can tell you, Mr. Ryan's in the past when I've contacted GMA. We do have a, no, a new person of GMA that's uh, over the legal department now, but in the past when I've contacted GMA, they would say that needs to be handled between your city manager and your city attorney. That will be the answer that, that you will get. But that we do have Rishi Patel, who's the new uh, legal person for GMA. I will reach out to well, Mr. Well, I, I, Mr. I, I, Mr. Patel. The, the reason I ask that, because I, I, I'm, I'm, I record 30 cities with this type of problems. Mm -hmm. And I just never seen it the way I see it here. Yes, sir. And I commend the cities that are carried out the, 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 the affairs of the people like you should. Right. <laughs> but I have never seen wherein the, the elected officials don't have equal share. And it seemed like, you know, so I think GMA would be probably gonna be your best bet. Yes, sir. Thank you. I will definitely reach out to them because this is this is really ridiculous. It's sad. It's sad. Thank you. 
Yeah. And Mr. Davis knew right off how long I'd been asking for executive session. I couldn't even recall. I knew it's been a while. When he started studying, he started lying. There is pending litigation, by the way. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's in the appeal process. That is pending. Right, right. Then they're going to try to come before us and, and give us some hogwash that we're supposed to swallow and just take it. You know? <laughs> I've had enough. I've had enough. It's so sad. It's sad.
because they are accused of being guilty when they're not even given a chance, chance to, prove their, to prove their innocence and fired and ruined their life and their children. That's right. I hope that y'all have to sleep with that. They do. Because elections coming up. Right. Yeah. And I have to vote, I have to be elected in the city of Ambrose. And I have a I hope that I have enough compassion for our employees. Because mm -hmm. we had something like this similar to happen. Yeah. And we let him come before us and talk about and talk it. He about got it. fired by somebody there. And we came he we hired him back because he was innocent. I've seen that in minutes. Yeah. Minutes. This, this is sad. Right. They did this, this is right sad. On this, board. this is sad. It it's been sad at one of the other sad. meetings. This is one of the worst administrations ever. I've been on the council yes. 20 years, and I can say this is one of the worst administrations I've ever seen. Let me ask you a question. I go to, I have never seen a meeting adjourn like the one in Douglas this evening. And I'm going to 30 cities. If you go to Boston GBR, you'll see a lot of my videos. Mm -hmm. I've never seen this before. Why, why, why does the people sit on the council allow this to happen? Because, because, because they, they don't tell. have any gumption. They don't have any gumption. Well, they, they're going to go along with whatever because they don't care enough. They don't care enough. If it was happening to their family members, it will be a different story. Have anybody, I mean, when I was in Gordon, they, they, had, they called hell in Gordon with Mayor Ann Whippaloo. Mm -hmm. And my question is, why have not somebody contacted GMA? I mean, this is what, even they, some of the cities that I've been to, they came down. And they and, 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 and they gave training session. Mm -hmm. The attorney general, mm -hmm. uh, Sam Olins at the time, he came to this uh, mayor because I was in May with this mayor has denied us 
our freedom of speech. That's what he just done. And civil duty. And si that's right. And civil duty. We have a right to represent the people. If they are concerned from the people, we got a right to say it. But he adjourned the meeting. And somebody just called me today before I was getting ready. Before I was getting ready to come. Can you all sit down and talk? Can your mayor and some of your commissioners sit down and talk? I say, sure, we could sit down and talk. Well, no, after the night, there's no talking. There's no talking. There's no talking. Because whatever he says is going to be a lie. And I will not believe it. I will not believe it. And I don't know what has happened for Tony Pope to turn into the person he's became. But God knows this is wrong. This is wrong. Mayor. No other mayor has ever denied an elected official from stating their concerns. Council. No other mayor. Uh, yes, sir. Commissioner. Uh, I hear you talking a lot. And I'm just being honest with you. Okay. And, and I'm not ashamed of anything that I'm saying. I'll be on okay. MSNBC. I ain't got nothing. Yes, sir. I got you. My point is. I hear you bring up a lot of issues, and to me, some of them are, 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 is beyond you. But somebody in the state of Georgia mm -hmm. should be able to come and address these concerns, even with your state advantage, I heard you talk, yeah. in terms of our executive session. Right. Now, if I wasn't going to 30-plus cities, mm -hmm. I wouldn't know about going into executive session. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a member of the press. And they denied me a right in Brooks County mm -hmm. during the Quitman 10 plus 2 case. They brought them up on 100 to 200 charges, mm -hmm. and eventually they, all the charges were dropped. So here's a question. The Board of Election Chairman mm -hmm. said I did not even have a right to record at a public meeting. And she was... And she worked for the... Yeah, but here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody in the state of Georgia, mm -hmm. address your concerns mm -hmm. and the issues. Yeah. Then how, how will you ever get resolved? How, how will Douglas ever get straightened out? You're right. Well, that's why one way we can get straightened out is by the people going to the poll and unseating him. He needs to go. Tony Pope needs to go. Now, I've sat here and I've been real quiet about electing folk. But Tony Pope needs to go home. He has forgot why he's here. If he ever knew, it's time for him to go to the house. The and these commissioners that's going along with him, Commission. they need to go as well. The commission, commission, I'm going to ask you a question. And, and I know this, I'll post all this, you know, I don't edit much oh, stuff. Oh, yes, sir, post but, it. But my question is this. Check on her. I hear you talk Check on her. about what you're saying, but don't you think that this should be out of your hand? It should be concerned with someone else? Sir, excuse Don't you me? think this should be out of your hands and with someone else? The people. Now, not only and, and you say, on a higher level, yes, sir. Yeah. So I'm going to because I know I'm going to I know there are procedures. To make I'm going to definitely complaint. reach out to a higher authority. And normally, because this is ridiculous. Because, like I said, my rights were violated tonight by not having the opportunity to express my concerns. He had no right to violate my right to freedom of speech. I disagree with you on that. He had a right to do that. No. He didn't only this. I mean, there was other people they had rights too. Certainly, so but not they're, not, they're not here talking about their rights. And the citizens, their rights, and the citizens have a right to listen. That's exactly so right. They, don't, they didn't get their right. You're right. This, I is agree. Open, this is open government. Open government. This is what's in Under the handbook. Under the sunshine law. This is the sunshine law that I read all the time. Yes, sir. I yes, never sir. seen nothing like this. He's violated the law. He's violated the law. So what do you think will happen to Doug? I gotta go. What do you think will happen? I pray that there is a new administration up in a few, uh, how many more weeks or so? Mm -hmm. January, a few months, October, November, December, January. Mm -hmm. I hope there's a new administration. May I, may I give you a little piece of information? Yes, sir. That's not good enough. Okay. If there have been laws that have been violated mm -hmm. with the Sunshine Law, mm -hmm. and if all these elected officials were denied the right to continue this meeting mm -hmm. or because whatever system there may be, mm -hmm. it should be out of the hands of a voting process. Mm -hmm. Georgia got, yeah. I know, I've gone to GMA. I talked to the top level up there. Yes, sir. You, you ever talked to Larry Hanson up there? Yes, he's out of that officer, Georgia. Yeah. I talked with him. You may want to call him again. Because okay. this, from what I see here, I'm going to post, I may send this GMM myself. Please do. Along with some of the other videos Please that do. I have. Please do. So, so somebody can yes, help. Yes, sir.
the taxpayers yes, to be represented right. as the constitution right. of our democracy yes. so represents. Yes, this is the Get To Free Press. I'm George Voss Rhymes, and I report what others ignore. Thank you. This is one of those trying times to see if the relationship that we had for two and a half years gets eroded or erased by one or two events. And in totality, I see a couple pastors sitting over to my left. Sometimes we find ourselves in difficult positions. Sometimes we find ourselves in unpopular positions. President Abraham Lincoln said that the office of the presidency has driven me to my knees more during this presidency than ever in my life. That reigns true with me being the mayor the second time. And I, I say to the citizens of Douglas, this too shall pass. The city of Douglas, we have to get on the other side of this. We have to mend some fences. We have to mend some fences. We are still charged to govern the city of Douglas. That's what we are, are here to do, Hi. is to govern the city of Douglas. And leadership by example is the strongest form of leadership the strongest form of leadership. And we have to set that example. We are held to the highest standard in the city of Douglas. We are held to the highest standard. We don't get to do something incorrect. Every citizen is watching us. And we have to be mindful of that. And I hope and pray that as a council, we will be able to get past this. And I ask this right here. May God continue to bless the citizens of Douglas. And I ask God to give me my council bike. The council that I prayed for to come down here and govern in a harmonious environment. I want that council bike. I do not want to drink from this bitter cup of hatred and division anymore. I don't want to do that. I want my council back where we were governing and we were respected in this community. I want that back and I am here and I am saying this now. I am going to do everything that I can to get that harmonious environment back.